All right, hello guys. Today we're going to be talking about our next big cooldown, which is really going to be the beginning of September. Right at the end of August through the beginning of September, we're expecting a pretty big cooldown, probably the biggest of this cold season that's approaching or throughout the summer, basically. Uh, but before you start with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description. We're going to get right into things here. I wanted to mention, I did mention that this cooldown could happen in my last big cooldown video. I mentioned that around the beginning of September looks to be pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and look at some of the teleconnections, which is Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, PNA, uh, EPO, things like that. So we're going to start out with our Arctic Oscillation. And this is basically if we have ridging and high high pressure within the Arctic regions of the world or not. In positive phases, we don't have blocking in those regions. In negative phases, we do, which would create you know the, the cold coming down into the more southern regions of the world and leaving the Arctic regions. Now, we don't really have too much going on with the Arctic Oscillation. As you can see, it stays pretty flat throughout the entire run. It does go a little bit negative there for the end of August and into the beginning of September, which could influence things a little bit, but it's not going too far negative. So I won't see, this one won't be too big of a player within this, but it isn't going against a cooldown. Same story with the NAO, which is basically if there's blocking in the, in the North Atlantic regions. Now, this is really gonna stay, again, pretty flat. Uh, maybe going a little bit negative there at the same time frame as the N as the AO, but really not a lot going on. You can see the EPO, which you would normally like to see in a positive phase, is in a negative phase. So this one is actually going against us. And the PNA, this is going to be probably the biggest player in this one. It does go pretty far positive there for our, our targeted time frame. So this is probably going to help out a lot with this cooldown that's going to be coming in. Now, I wanted to show the CFS uh, 500 uh, millibar heights here anomaly. And you can see it does, you see those blue colors there and how it connects with those Arctic regions in northern Canada and by Greenland. This is usually what we look for, this connection to bring pretty potent cold air. And this usually leads to pretty big cooldowns when we see this connection. Now, I want to talk more about this because you can see the winds here. This is the ECMWF Ensemble model. All the models are pretty much in really, really good agreement with this one. But you can see these winds, they're coming straight down from, again, those northern Canada regions and also Alaska, which is going to have pretty cold air by this point, into the central United States and then back out through the eastern United States. This is going to lead to very cold temperatures being able to intrude into the the United States, particularly the northern United States, but really the whole central United States. And this is what you like to see in the wintertime as well, obviously, with these with these northern Canada temperatures being able to dive south into the United States. This is what usually leads to our cooldowns. You can see the GFS has the same exact thing, temperatures from northern Canada and basically Alaska intruding into the central United States and this is going to lead to a more potent cooldown than you're used to at least for this time of year and you can also see those you can hardly see it but those arrows coming basically from the North Pole straight into the northern Canada area and then straight down into the United States area this does warm up as it heads south but still it will lead to far below average temperatures and you can also see the GFS does have this connection with the blue colors here on the 500 millibar height anomalies. Those blues connect from northern Canada down straight south into the central and eastern United States. It's going to lead to a pretty potent cooldown. So here's what the CFS has from the 23rd of August till the 28th. And you can see pretty cool temperatures from Montana down into the Dakotas, Nebraska, and all of the central United States for the most part. And then also the eastern United States. Pretty cool temperatures. Those greens is anywhere from 8 degrees to 15 degrees below average. We only stay in those dark greens, which means we'll likely be around 9 to 10 degrees below average for a lot of these areas. But it's gonna again, it's all because of that wind being able to push the cold temperatures down from northern Canada and those very, very northern regions down into the United States. This is what we look for in very potent cooldowns. And then you can see from the 28th, till the 2nd of September, the central United States get really cool here 
Oklahoma, Kansas this is really good news for Texas and Oklahoma. If this can really verify, if we can stay with this, this is pretty far out. So I'm more confident in the northern areas. But if those southern areas can get it, that would be very good news for you guys in Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, as we would see a, a very, very good relief from that heat wave that's been going on in that death ridge that we've been seeing. But really, the central United States seeing a pretty big cooldown on this one, particularly. And then this is the first through the sixth. You can see it kind of tapers off, but we still see those blues, which is anywhere from one degrees to eight degrees below average, which is very good news for a lot of these central, south central regions that are experiencing a lot of heat recently. Now, here's the CMC ensemble model. I just want to go over all the models just to show that they're all showing basically the same thing. It's This is only for 18Z in the 1st of September, which is basically your high temperature for that day. You can see those greens showing up, particularly for Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. We have those greens, which is again, 8 to 15 degrees below average. Here's your ECMWF ensemble, which is the European ensemble model. Oklahoma, Kansas, Kansas Nebraska, the Dakotas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, all of these areas, again, experiencing those very potent uh, cooler temperatures that are below average. Here's the GFS ensemble model, and you can see same story, a lot of those greens showing up. For a lot of these regions, far below average temperatures. Now, I wanted to get into some verification. I wanted to mention that a lot of the high temperatures could be in the 70s and 60s for a lot of these regions, particularly the northern regions, obviously. The southern regions, it's all about knowing your average temperature for the 1st of September. If your average is, let's say, um, 85, you could be looking at as far below average as 75 to, or as far, you know, cool temperatures that are as cold as 75 to 70 degrees. So this could be far below your average and if you're in the green and it's really going to be good relief from the heat and it's going to be a pretty big cool down. Now I wanted to do ver verification because people usually discredit these videos and they're like, oh, it's summertime. It's been so hot. There's no way it's going to be cold. Well, I'm saying below average because if your average is 95, you're only going to be getting down to 80 if you're 15 degrees below average. So it's, it doesn't mean it's going to be cold for you, but it will be below your average. Now, I did call for a cool down in the beginning of August, and this is the first and second of August this year. And you see there was that cool down there for the central and east, the central east United States, the it's hard to see because we don't have the state lines here, but basically the Great Lakes regions into the into some of the northern Great Plains, the Dakotas there, down into Iowa and in Indiana, Illinois, areas like that. We do see those blues. So that did verify, that did happen, even though a lot of people doubted it. And in those purple colors were three degrees below average Kelvin, which is pretty close to Celsius. So we do see pretty far below average temperatures there. Now, I did also call for a cool down for the 14th and 15th of August for the northern United States. And this is what happened. You can see from the Dakotas down through maybe northern uh, Nebraska into Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. We see some of those very far below average temperatures for this region as well as New England went far below average in this time frame. So these do actually verify a lot of the time, uh, even though people discredit it constantly. And some people's averages is, is you know, 90 or 85 this time of year and they they don't see it turn cold and they don't understand that I'm saying below average, not necessarily cold for you. Some people's average is, is 80 by this time of year and, and you're going to see a significant cool down uh, and it will be below room temperature for you if you do have 15 degrees below average. So it would be quite, quite noticeable for you if that were to happen. I just wanted to do some verification because a lot of people were like, do you ever look back at your forecasts? And I just wanted to show that most of the time when I do call for these cooldowns, there is a cooldown and uh, you don't have to wonder if it's going to happen or not. There is more than a 70% chance that I will be correct with these cooldowns. That's how it usually turns out. And obviously not all of the areas that I call for the cooldown are going to have it, but it, within some reason it will verify within certain areas that I'm calling for it. We do call for a pretty broad area of cooldown and then it ends up usually being a little less broad, a little bit more uh, uh, local, obviously, because it's going to be more high resolution when it really happens. It's hard to explain, but that's kind of how it works. 
just like on a seasonal forecast, if I'm calling for above average precipitation for the entire south, uh, southern United States and northeastern United States, there will be some areas within that that don't see above average precipitation for certain reasons. Anyway, guys, I hope you really, really enjoyed this video, and I hope that you liked the fact that I did show some verification there at the end, because I do like to show the results compared to my forecast. You can look back at my videos and see that I was calling for cooldowns within those those time periods and see. I do want to do these with the monthly and seasonal forecasts as well. I used to do that last fall, I think. I did a September forecast, an October forecast, where I did do the verification, and they turned out really great, actually. I think... The September forecast was one of my biggest successes last year, so uh, that was very fun to see it turn out very correct. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you stay warm during this cooldown, even though it'll probably only be 60s and 70s for a lot of regions. See you guys in the next video.